Good evening. We'll call the Burlington City Council December 18th, 2012 meeting to order. This time I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here and hopefully you'll return in the future. This time we'd also ask that you uh, turn off all electronic devices. <coughs> call Mayor Pro Tem David Huffman for tonight's invocation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together this evening to participate in this exercise of democracy. We ask for your guidance and wisdom as we go about conducting the city's business. We pray that you enable us to conduct ourselves in a civil manner and, re and remain open-minded to the concerns and opinions of one another. May the actions that we take this evening be in the best interest of all the citizens of our town. In your, in your name we pray, amen. Amen. This time we recognize city clerk Renee Ward. Ms. Ward. It is my responsibility to remind you of your duty to avoid conflicts of interest in matters that are before us. This time I ask if there are any potential conflicts concerning tonight's agenda. None. None. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of minutes A, December 4th, 2012, work session B, December 5th, 2012, City Council meeting. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Adoption of the agenda. Will be adopt the agenda as written. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Consent agenda, these items are typically non-controversial. If anyone has any questions about the following items, please let us know. A, to approve the 2013 North Carolina State Firemen's Association Annual Certification Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 58-86-25. B, Budget Amendment 2013-28, CDBG Home Program Loan Payments, spelled out in your agenda. C, Budget Amendment 2013-29, Burlington Downtown Corporation, is spelled out in your agenda. We'll approve the consent agenda. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Moves us to the next item, public hearing two. City Council will consider an application to rezone from ONI Office Institutional District to CONI Conditional Office Institutional District for the use of a hospital, the emergency health stop, and all uses allowed within the ONI Office Institutional District and the R ONI Redistrict Office Institutional District. Properties located at 1240 Huffman Mill Road is shown on Alamance County Tax Map 3 22, lots 32, 48, 51, 58, and 72. At this time, we'd recognize Ms. Nelson. Ms. Nelson, reckon, uh, welcome. Thank you. Mayor and Council, we are here tonight for a public hearing on a rezoning from ONI to conditional ONI for an expansion of the hospital. The Planning and Zoning Commission gave it a unanimous recommendation, and TRC has approved the site plan for the proposed addition. It is in order, and staff recommends approval. The applicant is here along with city staff to help answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Ms. Nelson before we uh, move to a public hearing? Okay, thank you, Ms. Nelson. This is uh, a reminder of public hearing. Anyone on this side that would like to speak? Mr. Mayor, the applicant is here, I believe. Okay. Please come forward, sir. Hello, I'm Bill Payne, the facility engineer for the hospital. And I do have the presentation here that we made to the uh, zoning committee. I'll be glad to show it to you. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. If you're interested or in respect to your time, um, I can do it later. No, we're interested. Okay. All right. uh, let me see if I can get this thing, navigate this. All right. Well, first let me introduce um, Tim Knapp. Tim is our architect with uh, Clark Patterson Lee, and Preston Hammock is our CEO at the hospital. Uh, the other team members are KBR as the const construction contractor. And Dewberry is our engineering firm. Oops. Wow. That's pretty sensitive. I like that pace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mind if I use the uh, keyboard? No, it's fine. Mouse is too fancy for me. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, this is our property as it stands. And the, uh, there was one little piece of field there that was uh, that we'll be bringing, uh, working with France Holt, with Allie Williams, Carmen King, to a voluntary annex th that section. Uh, so we'll own to Kirkpatrick. And that's our property lines. And as you can see, we have uh, added buildings over time. We were built in 95, and we had a major addition in 2002 that expanded our emergency department. And it's time for us to expand it again. Uh, we are, we, we, so we continue to grow. Um, the new addition, are gonna, we're doing a two, two buildings. Um, the one to the north is an expansion of our emergency department. We're basically doubling the size of our ED. And we'll also, above that, be putting, uh, enlarging our operating room facilities and then building a new mechanical room that serves those two additions. And then on the south building is a 40,000 square foot cancer center. And we can, uh, this is a kind of a computer rendering, kind of a massing, showing the gray part will be how the ED comes out in front of the building. And 
Let's see if I can. This red line represents the exterior of the building. So that ED that we're going to be building new, uh, this is like our current ambulance entrance is here. So we'll be building way out towards the helicopter pad. And our current walk-in entrance is here. So this is our ED waiting room currently. We'll be pushing the waiting room further north. This is to bring us a total of 58 rooms, uh, exam rooms. So that's uh, we're trying to build for a 70,000 visit ED, which is we project will be there in about 2020. So far, though, every time we project to the future, we get there faster than we anticipated. So we're uh, hopefully this will will last a little longer. Well, if we double the size of the of the treatment area, we also have to double the size of the parking. So our we have uh, the yellow represents kind of the new parking layout. Uh, current our ED parking is only this stripe right through here. So we'll be adding this additional parking for people to use, it, to use the walk-in entrance. We're also going to create a new road for the ambulances to come in on, so they won't be sharing the same drive as the private vehicles. We think this will be safer as people, uh, they come pretty fast into our ED. Uh, to make all this work, our helicopter pad, landing pad, is going to stay the same size, but the fence around it will be brought in to, uh, is to the design. There's, a, there's a, a design parameter that we can meet, but right now the fence is way larger than it needs to be. So it'll, it'll tighten up around the helicopter pad. These next few slides are some computer renderings of what we anticipate the inside to look like. Um, so this would be like the registration. Uh, when people come into the waiting room, they'll look at desks like this where the office security will be and uh, nursing and triage. Uh, we'll receive patients here in the waiting room. And you can see here's a triage uh, door that leads back. And once they get back into the treatment area, this is... Uh, a model of one of the nurses' stations. It's amazing what they can do with computers these days. <laughs> uh, so upstairs, the, we're moving up to the operating rooms. Now, we're restricted by the state on how many operating rooms we can have. But what the rooms that we do have are relatively small because of technology has uh, really drove, driving these rooms bigger. So. We're rebuilding the same number of rooms. We're just enlarging them from about 400, 450 square foot to around 700 square foot apiece. So here again, this red line represents the exterior wall. So we'll be building these five new ORs here and then going back and renovating the old ORs into these four uh, additional ORs. So we'll end up with a total of nine. In our same day surgery area, which is if you came for surgery for day surgery, you'd be prepped, go back to the ORs and come back and recover in this green area, and it's about doubling in size. So now we move down to the cancer center. This, um, currently the cancer center is in the basement of this medical arts building. And these two, uh, this piece that sticks out one level, are linear accelerators. These are big radiation uh, generating equipment. So the walls around there are three foot thick. So it's a big concrete vault. And each vault's about a million dollars. So we said, well, we probably shouldn't move those. So we're, we designed the new cancer center to wrap around them from the other side so we can leave those in place. So that's the reason why I kind of, this new building kind of hooks around the old one. Uh, this is uh, one side of that. And this is another angle. The thing that excites me is this whole long row of windows right here are like bay windows. And this is where all our chemo, our chemo treatment area is going to go right down that window. Right now, our patients are in the basement with no windows. So we're going to be able to redesign this to have a lot of daylight and be looking out over a park that we plan to build. So in the first floor of the cancer center, uh, there's a place for community education, so we have some larger rooms uh, for any type of wind service or a community event. Uh, we have uh, the radiation exam rooms, and here's the two layer accelerators I spoke of earlier. 
and these are all offices and business offices associated with the cancer center. Uh, and as they go upstairs, there'll be uh, oncology exam rooms, a place for physicians and also our research uh, staff. And then here's all the infusion bays. And they might look like this is the computer rendering of that area. As you can see, it looks very open. But there's also some private areas because patients usually like to have a choice of being part of a community and, and having their four-hour treatment together or they'd rather be isolated and be by themselves. So uh, this facility has uh, both. But anyway, that's, that is what we plan to build. Our um, timeline is that we were hoping to start <coughs> first of the year and be substantially finished by the end of 2013. So it's a very aggressive schedule. Any questions? Comments from? Yeah, I, let me just ask a couple of questions. I know that uh, as, uh, as uh, members of the city council, we've been told on occasion that, um, let me just say, are y'all expanding the behavioral health uh, building facility at all over there? Well, within. For any additional beds? Not with not the bed count. That's dictated by the state. What we are doing in our ED is where we have lots of behavioral patients coming into the ED, mm -hmm. uh, and they've taken up a, they, it takes up a lot of the ED treatment space, and they stay for quite a while because it's very complicated to get them relocated. Mm -hmm. Part of our ED renovation is having a space especially built uh, for these types of patients that's a safe environment. And the reason I ask that is, that I, is it because we, of course, as if law enforcement's involved in Correct. having them there, we have to have that officer stay yes, there the whole time, and that's been problematic for all municipalities right. in season. We've tried contracting that out on occasion. I don't know that that worked uh, all that particularly well. Is it being reorganized so that uh, one officer could, in fact, uh, be able to handle uh, one uh, area there without being having tied up one and more officers at a time? Yes, sir. Let me just jump in. I'm Preston Hammock. I'm the chief operating officer at the hospital. We have worked to expand our behavioral capacity over the past year by working with the state to add some additional capacity in our unit. Um, that's worked well to help alleviate some of that. Uh, in addition, the way that this unit is designed, it will enable us to um, offer some safety measures that are built into the infrastructure so that the need for that security personnel can be lessened without also lessening the secure environment for the patients. So we do believe that uh, we've already made some changes over the past year to try to enhance that um, and worked very well with Officer Verdict and I believe that that is a good step. This project will en enable us to even move it further. What's the, you say you've increased the bid capacity, what, what, uh, what's that? Uh, to we're up to, to, we're up to 20, 25 now. And what was it? Uh, we added six, I think, through the contract with the state. And this little <coughs> pink spot right here is the secured unit, uh, which has eight, which we, we built five now, but this will expand to eight, uh, so we can house eight patients there within the ED um, while they're not necessarily admitted to the hospital, but they're waiting for transfer to someplace else. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> Public hearing. Anyone on this side that would like to speak? Anyone on this side that would like to speak? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Move to approve the rezoning. Second. Got a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. I move to make a to approve the statement of consistency. Yeah. Yes. Is that spelled uh, out here? Yes. yes. I made a motion for that. The uh, move that we approve that statement of consistency as written. Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Brings us to new business. City Council will consider adopting a resolution requesting that the General Assembly enact legislation amending North Carolina General Statute Section 160A 58. Uh, Point one B as it applies to the city to allow satellite annexations. At this time, I recognize Mr. Bateman. Mr. Bateman, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as requested at the last meeting, um, I have prepared a draft local bill which could be introduced in the legislature 
to allow us to service certain properties who have water available but do not have sewer service available. The uh, proposed amendment to the act is uh, attached to your packet. What we have to do is ask for two changes to the law. One is a change that would uh, allow us to annex individual lots within a subdivision. Typically, if you had an, have a satellite annexation, you have to take everything in the subdivision. So we would need a waiver of that provision. We would also need to add the language allowing us to annex without being able to offer sewer. Uh, I mean, yes, offer sewer. And the resolution that's also attached to your packet uh, sets forth the rationale for the act in that it is in our growth area and we do have certain properties that would like to be annexed and afford themselves with our service, but we uh, need this act to be able to go forward with it. <coughs> Any comments to Mr. Bateman? Well, I think you know how I feel about this, so I'm going to make a motion to adopt the resolutions. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Bateman. I will tender, I will tender that to our local delegation at a very early a time. Yeah. yeah. I got his front pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I think they may already have. Item number four, City Council will consider approving a cost allocation agreement with the Town of Ossipee to identify cost sharing responsibilities for design and construction of a planned water line. This time we'd recognize Mr. Root. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. <clears throat> in August, on August 6, 2012, the Town of Ossipee and City of Burlington entered into an interlocal agreement to serve Ossipee with up to 100,000 gallons per day of water. The cost allocation agreement ident identifies the cost sharing responsibilities of design and construction of a planned war line to serve Ossipee. The intended route of the water line would be along Highway 87, tying into Burlington system at MacArthur Lane, and then tying to Ossipee's water system at Eldon Drive. The map here shows the, the route in uh, orange, MacArthur Lane being here, 87 to the north. Uh, Durham Street Extension is at this location, and the Eldon Drive is basically uh, in that location there. <clears throat> the agreement, uh, oh, let me back up. The OSPE has applied for a Division of Water Resources State Revolving Fund Loan to fund the cost of the water line design. The cost is $230,740. Uh, the agreement specifies for a pro rata distribution based on the ownership of the line what the cost sharing responsibilities will be, uh, meaning based on the amount of water line that Burlington and OSPE have agreed to maintain, all costs will be distributed by this formula. The maintenance breakdown is such. Uh, Burlington would maintain the section south of Durham Street. Ossipee would maintain the section north of Durham Street extension. The split would be a 75-25 uh, uh, distribution, 75% being Burlington, 25% Ossipee. And in the agreement, it states that if Ossipee is un unsuccessful in gaining a state revolving fund loan, Within five years, they would reimburse Burlington in lump sum for their portion of the design cost. Upon completion of the design, prior to September 30th of 2013, OSPE intends to apply for another state revolving fund loan for the construction of the water line. In the event OSPE is awarded the state revolving fund for the construction, Burlington and OSPE would split eligible costs by the same formula. 75-25 split. Uh, I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions for Mr. Reed? You know where they stand on their grant? <coughs> they should be hearing something back next month, January, for the uh, design portion of the state of Bobham. How long the design take? The, uh, the schedule right now is if the, if the uh, award is allowed tonight, then they would begin January 1st and complete uh, end of August. Be ready to have this turned in for state revolving loan before September 30th. I, yeah, I, I think, Harold, I think you and I spoke about the engineering cost on this. Are we at that stage? Well, 
yeah, this is the green itself. Is, it shows the, the the cost of that sharing, but also depending on the the green itself, it uh, the reimbursement for the actual construction of the line could be significant uh, in terms of, of the the cost. Each municipality would be very limited. Um, also, Lanny, you might want to mention that we went this route uh, in terms of the high pressure uh, line and still going a, a shorter route up Durham Street. Uh, along 87 North that would give us more pressure in terms of service of that area in the future. Yeah, yeah. I just want to, the citizens to know what we're doing here. You know, we're providing water for, we're trying to provide water for OSPE, but how the cost is going to be spread it, <coughs> just in case they, understand, you know, think that they, they're paying for it themselves, you know, which in case we're really not, you know, getting a grant for it. But I think the public should, needs to know that. Yes, um, the uh, the design itself, as I said, the um, application for the funding of the design is is in the works. OSPE should find out something involving that in January. If within five years they aren't granted an award, at this point we would move ahead uh, upon council's direction, move ahead with the design, so we would be obligated for the 230. <coughs> and if uh, funding were not achieved within five years, OSPE would reimburse us in a lump for their portion. We'd be financing the whole project, and they'd be reimbursing us. Correct. For design. For design. For design. Any other comments? Well, just one more. This is, frankly, just one step further. Burlington is becoming a regional water provider. And we've gone east, we've gone west, and now we're going north. And I think we're being pretty good about expanding our uh, distribution system. Well, I make a motion that uh, we award the contract and approve the budget amendment. Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Next item uh, five City Council will consider awarding a contract to U.S. Infrastructure of Carolina Incorporated in the amount of $230,740 to provide engineering services to extend approximately 20,000 linear feet of 12 inch water main along North Carolina 87 from MacArthur Lane northward, northward to Eldon Drive and to approved budget amendment 2013 30. This time we'd recognize. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In August, the engineering department performed a qualification-based uh, selection process to identify a professional engineering consultant to design a 20,000 linear foot waterline along Highway 87. This will become the waterline to serve OSPE as previously stated in the cost allocation agreement. U.S. Infrastructure of the Carolinas was chosen to perform these services of uh, surveying, geotechnical investigation, permitting, engineering design, and to uh, get the um, safe uh, state revolving fund ready to proceed documents in hand ready for application September 30th. The cost negotiated to do the required services is $230,740. Questions for Mr. Rue? I think mean, you just answered that for us. Thanks, Lane. I got a little ahead of myself there. I was looking at your name twice. <laughs> Any other comments? Movie approved the award of the contract. Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Movie also approved the budget amendment. Oh, you know, there's two different motions. Two different, yeah. Should have been one. Yeah. Second. You got a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item number six, City Council will consider approving a second supplemental agreement for safe routes to school. Sidewalk project to extend the completion date to September 30th, 2013. Once again, we recognize Mr. Rue. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, in 2009, staff identified Sellers Mill Road for potential for safe route to school funding for construction of a sidewalk. Limits of the uh, sidewalk were uh, from Hanover Road to Richard Street and was approved for just over $69,000 in funding. Last year, a supplemental agreement was approved to extend the sidewalk along Broadview Street to complete the tie-in to Broadview Middle for an additional funding to bring the total of the funding at this point to $96,088. 
The proposed second supplemental agreement before you tonight extends the completion date of construction of both sidewalks to September 30th, 2013 in lieu of December 31st, 2012 as previously approved. Questions, comments? So the only thing you're doing here is just pushing the date out. That's correct. Make a motion to uh, approve the agreement. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Rue. Before we get to the next item, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Troop 19, uh, Mr. David Parker, uh, the scout leader from uh, Shallow Presbyterian Church. Also recognize Brighton Wolf and also Jacob Perkins. Guys, welcome. Um, anything you'd like to say to this council? We're here to observe democracy and progress. Well, good for you. We also have a, a council member and former mayor here that's an Eagle Scout. Maybe he can give you some words of wisdom. This just uh, words of wisdom. Stick with it. Go the, go the duration. Finish. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. We'll be glad you did. We also recognize one of our own, Miss Wolf. Thank you for being here as well. Brings us to the next item uh, of on our agenda, which is not on the written agenda. Uh, we take the time to recognize one of our own, and that is uh, Council Member Ross. And at this point, at this time, we have several uh, guests from the council and staff. We will take the opportunity to to read. Presented to Stephen M. Ross with most sincere gratitude and appreciation for having selflessly dedicated your time, effort, and heart for 16 years in service to the city of Burlington and its citizens in the capacities of mayor and councilman of the city of Burlington, North Carolina. A civilization flourishes when people plant trees under which they will never sit. Presented this 18th day of December, 2012. Have one. Also, for your office, <laughs> office <laughs> <He's today>. okay. <laughs> we present you with this drawing, whatever you want to describe it. Caricature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be fine. Uh, with uh, all the different uh, areas of downtown Burlington and the city of Burlington as well. So we present this to you to hang in your office. Once again, congratulations. Uh -huh. That's, I'm looking for local uh, items uh, from each of the municipalities in the district to, uh, to take down and uh, portray them all. So. Well, and one last thing, we don't want you to forget about us. We'll give you an opportunity to speak as well. We're not going to forget about you. We're going to present you with the city flag uh, of Burlington and also a stand for you to have in your office in Raleigh. And again, remind you that uh, if things don't go our way, we'll be down there. <laughs> I'll be there at 8 o'clock in the morning wrapped in it, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. As much as I look forward to going on to Raleigh to try to accomplish new things uh, for our community, uh, it's with a heavy heart that I that I do that that I that I leave. Uh, Sixteen years is a long time. I have seen uh, a number of uh, changes in those years. Uh, there are some council members that I worked with years ago, uh, Don Starling, uh, David Maynard. Uh, doesn't a day go by that I, that I don't miss those two. Uh, they, were, they were excellent public servants. Um, and I'll miss you guys too, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> But that you had your fingers crossed. <laughs> I 
not feeling the love. <laughs> but, you know, in, in, in all seriousness, um, I, the city of Burlington is a great city. Um, already, just in the few meetings I've been in in Raleigh, I've, I've been bragging on uh, what is done here. Uh, actually, Burlington has an excellent reputation in Raleigh uh, for the way we operate. Uh, we're used a lot of times as a model. I know tonight we talked about regional water, uh, and I can remember a few years, Harold, when uh, we were in a speech somewhere that Mike Easley was doing during one of the droughts, when he was the governor, uh, and he used Burlington as, a, as an example of what a community can do for a bigger region uh, when they have the capacity to do that. Uh, I think most of all, uh, I'm going to miss the dedicated employees. Uh, all of them, uh, I've grown, they've become like family over the years, and uh, you know I'm not moving, so I'll still be here. So I will be here. Uh, one of the things I plan to do is um, is come into the city halls, whether it's Burlington, Graham, Mebbin, or River, um, from time to time over the next two years to kind of set up shop and allow citizens to come in and bring their concerns to me in person. Um, that's something that I think is, uh, is important. And, uh, you know, when you get off to Raleigh, sometimes that can seem like a long way. Some people may not have the capacity to go to Raleigh or may, may not want to take the initiative to maybe call. Um, but if you're here, then, uh, then they can come in and, and see you in person. Uh, my door will always be open. I look forward to uh, to continuing to serve this community just in a different capacity. And, you know, I thank all of you for uh, the examples that you've all given me over the years uh, as dedicated public servants, and we have some of the best. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak? I, yeah, go ahead. I'd like to say uh, for the short term that I've been on this council, Councilman Ross has been a big help to me. Uh, he lives around the corner from me a couple of blocks, and uh, you're going to be missed on this council. Yeah, but we, we, we look at it as we have somebody in Raleigh now that represent us, not that we didn't before, but we have someone that we personally know that hasn't that we can get a zero we hope because if we don't I'll bring my positive rally <laughs> with this group here yeah we got we got your back though when you go down there if you need help we will come down there to help you out but again I appreciate your efforts and I appreciate what you've done for me in the couple of years that I've been on this council and thank you so much for being a good public servant thank you mayor um Steve, my good friend, I, I've been around virtually the whole 16 years, and it's indeed been uh, my honor and pleasure to have been here and work with you and for you over the years. I know you're doing an outstanding job in Raleigh. You did here. Uh, you're indeed an exemplary public servant. We wish you the best, and uh, we'll, we'll be coming to see you. Part of the posse. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, I've been up here with you the whole time and I've been the recipient of some of your dirty notes that you've been handing me over here all this time and I've tried to make you straighten up your act and <laughs> but <laughs> you don't have to take that. <laughs> I want to tell you something uh, Steve uh, has always been uh, one who is focused on the aspect of this job that I really think this is and it's public service this is not politics and you've always been able to distinguish between the two and focus on that. And we, uh, uh, I appreciate that person. I appreciate the fact that you've been a good friend all these years. We have common interest. Steve is a history buff, and uh, nothing I enjoy more than talking about history and reminiscing with you, and uh, I, I'm, that's not going to end. You know, it strikes me that 16 years ago th that your daughter was just a toddler when you started up here and I remember her at the, in these at the meetings and now she's no longer a toddler and you're toddling around <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but one thing I do recall is that uh, in, in the first term, I remember you talking about your, your uh, what you'd like to do in life, and, and you indicated that at some point in time after you had retired that you would like to go down to Raleigh in the state legislature. I am absolutely thrilled for you that this opportunity and this dream is coming true because not only I think it's, a, it's good for you, I think this is a great thing to happen for the city of Burlington. It thrills me to know that we are going to have someone in Raleigh, and I don't mean just Burlington, and I'm not talking about uh, 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 coming after you or anything of that sort. I'm talking about someone in the state legislature who I know truly understands and appreciates the challenges that face cities in this state and who will uh, at least stand up for us uh, in the legislature. And, and I, I look forward to uh, uh, watching your performance down there. Thank you. Steve, I think when we start talking about your legacy, I think we're going to talk about that you're one that has reconnected the city of Burlington to the region. I think that's one thing that you brought, to, as the mayor of Burlington, you brought that back and something that was desperately needed at the time, and you fulfilled that bill. I also think that you've brought another level of visibility um, of the mayor's position. The expectations are way high. I'll tell you a quick story that uh, every Sunday night my wife asks, what kind of meetings do you have this week? And I'll, I'll share those with you. And she says, God, that's a lot of meetings. I said, well, you, you can blame Steve Ross for that. <laughs> so now we're on Sunday nights, all she says is she doesn't ask me, Ronnie, what are we doing this week? She says, I know, we're going to blame Steve Ross. I said, that's correct. So we're blaming you for all of this, but we do appreciate I got everything. blame for stealing your Christmas decorations. <laughs> Now, this was supposed to be a serious conversation. Yeah. You're seeing him again at Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> but you have been a true public servant. I know there's no doubt in my mind that you do love this city. You've represented this city very well, not only in the city of Burlington, but wherever you've traveled, uh, you've, you've represented us well. You will continue to represent us well. Uh, you've been uh, a semi-mentor to me as well. With um, And when I say it, I say it like... Um, you let me learn some things on my own, um, but you also let me fall a few times and you pick me up to help me to understand things better. For that, I truly appreciate uh, your friendship and your loyalty, and there's no ifs and buts about where I stand with you. Uh, I consider you to be a true friend. So congratulations and best of luck in Raleigh. And I'm very serious about the fact that if you get, in Ra get to Raleigh and you start following all the boats on leadership, we're coming looking for you. That's a fact. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, turn your keys in, iPad in, and all that. Check them at the door. Yeah, just check them at the door. <laughs> Okay, that brings us to the, um, well, I'm sorry, you know what we didn't do? We did not record your, uh, recognize your family, and I think at this point in time you need to do that. I actually have uh, more here than, uh, than I had expected. Uh, uh, my wife is here, Tammy, uh, and uh, my daughter, Ashlyn, who's been mentioned, who when I first started, I took a picture of her sitting in one of these chairs, and she could barely... Her head would barely come above the top of the table. I know the feeling. <laughs> I didn't even have her in his chair sitting on his stand. <laughs> uh, also, uh, my sister-in-law and her husband Ricky are here. My sister-in-law is my wife's sister, uh, and she's also the city nurse. And her name? Sheila. 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 <laughs> Ricky. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, well, good. We're glad to have you all. And I'm sure you guys um, will um, echo some of the same things we said tonight. But it's been a pleasure getting to know you guys as well. And we appreciate all your support for the city of Burlington and, and Steve as well. So thank you very much. January 3rd, Steve's being sworn in here in the district uh, down at uh, the courthouse. In Graham. In Graham, Superior yeah. Court. 
meant to mention that. Uh, January 3rd, 10 o'clock in the morning at the uh, county courthouse in Graham. Chief <coughs> Justice uh, Newby uh, will be here. He's going to actually swear in myself, Dennis Rydell, and Rick Gunn at the same time. So you went, went on let you forget anything. See, David remind you of something already. So we're, we're starting now. <laughs> He's got my cell number. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. Public comments, any? Uh, city Council comments. Any? Uh, Christmas in the Park will be held Saturday, December 22nd from 6 uh, p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Burlington City Park. Uh, the retreat date has been established for February 21st, 8.30 to 12.30 at the Canodal Center. Um, Friday night, uh, a Dickens Christmas was wonderful. Mr. Laws and your staff, Ms. Fawcett, great job. Uh, it was outstanding. The way you spread it all out, it was wonderful, I thought. So we, um, we appreciate that. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Mayor. The retreat topics will be due for Friday, January 4th. Retreat topics due to Renee, Friday, January 4th. Any other comments um, from council? Otherwise, we will say Merry Christmas to all. At this point in time, we have a, a motion from the... Um, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, actually, I don't have it, but I'll be glad to move that we go into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-31811A6 to discuss the personnel. <coughs> second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We'll be back. Thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you, sir. <laughs>
Yeah. So thank you for hanging around. Somebody give me a fire glass of this. Yeah. Entertain, entertain a motion to go back into open session. Move so go back in. No, second. Second. Uh, motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Movie adjourned. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, men. Oh. They're still optimistic. Now I can get me a coat.